What's going on guys, it's Dale here from Demsec and in this video we're going to be solving a little issue that I've been having. So Aaron no longer lives with me, we've finished university and as a result we've all gone our separate ways and we've kind of relied on a free NAS system that we set up and it's just an old Dell Optiplex with about a terabyte of storage. It's not fantastic but it, it works and obviously him no longer being in the same local area network he can't access it so i came up with the idea of using my one of the raspberry pis i have as a vpn and i thought you guys would find this really interesting as well because not only does it allow you to access resources as if you are connected to the same network but a lot of, a lot of you guys i can imagine use have had to use public wi-fi in the past and have had to rely on a third party vpn service whereas this once it's set up it's essentially free for you to use and it allows you to connect back home and keep your connection secure. To do this we're going to be using Pi VPN and uh, this is probably the easiest way I've seen in a very long time to set up and configure OpenVPN and it's literally just this one command here. So the first thing we're going to need is obviously a Raspberry Pi and I'm using a Model B Plus. I'll leave a link in the description to everything I'm using, hardware, software, all that kind of cool stuff, so if there's anything you're missing, just go down to the description and it'll be down there. So this is the one that the ISO that we're going to need, or the image that we're going to need. It's the Jesse Light. We don't want the desktop because this is going to be running completely headlessly. So just go ahead and download that zip and extract it. And I've already gone ahead and done that. So the next step is to use Win32 Disk Imager. And Win32 Disk Imager essentially just allows you to flash that image onto your Raspberry Pi. And I already have my SD card plugged in, and that's on the device E. And uh, it's got two partitions, one's T, one's E. That'll make more sense to you in the future, but this already has Raspbian on it. I'm going to put a new version on. So I uh, don't need to do that. I'm just going to drag and drop the one I already have here. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. Uh, documents, downloads, uh, not a Raspberry Pi, sorry. And there we have it. And that's the image that we're going to write to this SD card. So if we type, hit write, yes, and then we're just going to have to wait. So that's now completed writing to our SD card. And we're just going to hit OK. And then I'm going to unplug the reader and plug it back in. And hopefully we'll have access to a boot partition. Judging by the fact we heard two of those sounds, and uh, yep, we definitely have access to the boot partition. So I don't like to have to plug these things into a screen and a keyboard to set it all up. I like to enable SSH, and before this version of Raspbian, or a few previous versions, it was just enabled by default. But a security feature now is that if you want to enable SSH on the first boot, if you go into the boot partition of the drive, and just create a file called ssh um, nope, and get rid of the .txt on the end of it, just ssh, doesn't have to have anything in it. But that will basically tell Raspbian to enable ssh on boot, that way we can find it on our local network and ssh in and do this completely headlessly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is put the SD card into the Pi, plug it into some ethernet and some power and wait for it to boot up. So there's many different ways to go ahead and find uh, the IP address of the uh, the Pi, and one, the probably the easiest way is to just log into your router and have a look down here, and it sees Raspberry Pi and its IP address. So we can go ahead and take that and SSH straight into it. Um, there could be a lot of blurring going on here because there's obviously stuff I don't want you particularly to see. <laughs> So now that we have the IP, we can open PuTTY and SSH into it. And obviously we haven't seen that key before, so it's going to ask us to confirm it. Login Pi, password Raspberry. And we're connected. SSH is default, please read. So if we type password, and it's like, let's set a new password. Oh, that's the current password. Obviously not going to work. Raspberry. And then whatever you want the password to be. So we've reset the password now, and if we do an app, uh, sudo apt get update, just to make sure that all the repositories are up to date. So 
So with that completed, now what we can go ahead and do is just paste that command that we uh, stole from the PyVPN website. And that's going to download a quick script, and then it's going to go ahead and install everything we need and configure it. This is ridiculously simple, and uh, if we scroll up while that's going on, it's going to take a while because it's got to generate all kinds of keys for us. Um, if we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see the usage, and it's so simple. Like If we want to add a new user, we can just say PyVPN add and it'll give us a prompt for a new user. And that is exactly how easy we want this to be. So that's gone ahead and installed a bunch of packages and now it's gonna ask us a series of questions so it can get set up. So it's gonna ask for a static IP address and an internal one. Yeah, sure, that can be a static one and I'll statically assign that on the router, but that's fine. Choose a local user that will hold your OpenVPN. We only have one user, so Pi is fine, and it's tab to get around here. Unattended updates, sure. <laughs> Probably a good idea really, isn't it? Okay, so here's the next question, and it's whether we want to use UDP or TCP. Uh, usually we want to go for UDP with a VPN, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 1194 is the default port, and I'm happy with the default port, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK there. And yes, that is correct. And it's, what What do we want to use? Um, sure, let's go paranoid, why not? <laughs> and this is where it's going to take a long time, because the Raspberry Pi really isn't good at processing tasks, like, very demanding processing tasks, so it's going to take a while for this to go ahead and generate our... 4096-bit RSA private key. Gonna ahead and done that now, and it's, uh, yeah, it's all been generated. Oh, now it's gonna generate the rest of the keys. So that was just the CA key. Now it's gonna generate the, pro the rest of the keys it needs. So yeah, more waiting. So this is asking us whether we want to use an online service to grab us the uh, Diffie-Hellman parameters or to generate them on our device and it is saying that it can take hours on a raspberry pi or you can instead download from the two ton digital service um see i would actually recommend you guys hitting yes here but because i'm making the video i'm going to hit no um and probably regenerate these after the fact but you go ahead and hit yes here um it will take a very long time as you say out as you can see hours but i'm going to hit no here just because i want to get this video up to show you guys how simple this is so yeah i'm gonna hit no here so apparently i totally misread that and i was meant to hit yes so now i guess i'm just gonna wait for this to complete as long as it's gonna take oh the things i do for you eight hours later so after generating that key which i would not recommend because you can see by the time in the corner of my screen here it took about eight hours to do a four 4096 if you help key on the system It'll ask you, will uh, clients use a public IP or DNS name to connect to your server? And in this case, my public IP is there, it's going to be blurred, but obviously you wanted to use the public IP, or if you have a um, DNS service, um, like no IP or anything like that, you can go ahead and enter that right here. But in our case, we're just going to go for the public IP. Probably going to have to do a lot blurring here, but you know. And then it's like, then it's going to ask what DNS provider you want to use for your VPN clients. Um, here I'm going to select custom because I actually want it to use my internal router as a DNS. Therefore, all my DNS traffic will be routed over the VPN and you don't have any horrible DNS leaks. And in this case, it's just going to be 1.254, which is the router. Um, if you have any DNS service or if you're running the... Um, DNS server we made in a previous video, which routes over HTTPS to Google DNS, you can go ahead and enter that here. I'm just going to ask, are these settings correct? Yes. And now we can go ahead and create a new user, but first it's going to want us to reboot. So uh, to appease the demo gods, we'll go ahead and say yes. And once it's rebooted, we can go ahead and log back in with the password uh, which we changed at the start of this. And now we should be able to do pyvpn add. 
I'm just going to enter a name for the client, so I'm going to say Dale, enter a password, and it's going to be nicely blurred out, which is nice. Then it's going to create us uh, the certificate file for that user. So that's gone ahead and created that now, and it's telling us where the file is. So if we now open WinSCP, and I'm just going to do ifconfig because I've forgotten the IP address. Clever, but you know. We can grab this IP address here, and using WinSCP, if we can find it, that is. It's opened on my other screen. Let me just bring that over. We'll be able to log in with that user, same Pi user. And we're going to have this OVPNs file, and we have dale.ovpn, and that's the actual connection file. So I'm going to create a new folder here called OVPNs in my documents. Remove that over, and that's the actual file that we're going to go ahead and put on whatever device we want to actually connect to the VPN with. So there's one less step of course we need to port forward on our router so I'm going to go ahead and go and log into our router here. I'm actually going to show you how to do this because I get a lot of requests about how to port forward and it's not that difficult. So uh, we want to go to firewall and uh, let's see if it's already in here I doubt it will be. So open VPN is not in here, so we're going to manage games and application. Let's add a new one. I'm going to say VPN. Uh, no, do not copy an existing game. And it's UDP, and it's 1194, 1194, 1194, 1194. <laughs> Add and apply. Now that we have that application, what we can go ahead and do is go back to port forwarding, select that from our drop down list and select a device and we're going to go for Raspberry Pi, we're going to add it. And then we should be able to apply. And now theoretically we can now VPN into our into our VPN <laughs> of all things. So what I'm going to do is move that file over to my phone and then connect and hopefully we'll be able to uh, connect and you know make sure we're actually online. So I've now gone onto my phone and you can see over in the top right hand corner that I'm on 4G. So I'm gonna gr already grab that VPN file and I did it in the most stupid way possible but I just emailed it to myself and I have a dale.openvpn here and I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna go ahead and connect. And at this point it's gonna ask me to enter the private key password which is the one that I set up during, uh, well, when we set it up on the Pi. So I'm going to enter that password now, blur the entire screen because, you know, I'm actually going to use this. And then we're going to wait for it to connect. This could take a few seconds to connect. And initialization sequence completed successfully. So we can go to now myip.is, and I'm going to have to blur this as well, God forbid. And we've got the same IP address that you saw, well, you saw the ending bit of in the previous uh, part of the video. So it works. We have our VPN and we can access the internet through this. And if we're on some dodgy Wi-Fi, hopefully we'll be safe. So that's the end of this video, guys. If you liked it, remember to leave a like down below. Leave any comments, questions, anything like that. And I will do my best to get back to you. Um, all the links, as before, are in the description. And I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.